factory, they had a very small turbocharger, no intercooler, so when the turbo gets hot... All right, hey, this is Mad Matt from Budget Boosting. Other videos, we've already showed you how to change a clutch master cylinder. Brandon did a great job on showing you how to do that. And now we're going to show you how to bleed this clutch master cylinder. Now I'm going to tell you what we've already done. All right, we've already put the clutch master cylinder in. We've already tightened it up. We've already tightened up our lines, and we've already pre-filled our reservoir with brand new brake fluid. And the easiest way to do this is with an assistant that's going to play with the pedal while you're bleeding. So you have somebody pushing the pedal, and you tell them to hold it. You break the, the little uh, bleed nut loose to let the air out. You do that a number of times till the clutch pedal has the firmness that you need. You don't have to start the engine or anything for this. This is just getting your hydraulic power to work and get all the air bubbles and all the air out and just get all clutch fluid in. So, without any further ado, we're going to move to the under part of the car. I've already got my assistant. He's ready with the clutch pedal. I already got the fluid in there. Now we're going to go under, grab the little wrenches, and bleed this thing. I'm now under the car. Real comfortable position, that is. Okay, we're looking at our clutch slave cylinder right here. The clutch cylinder connects to this clutch line, and it's a hydraulic line. And this goes all the way to the clutch master cylinder. So there's basically three components in this. you got the clutch master cylinder, the clutch line, and the clutch slave cylinder. They all work together to push in this fork to put pressure on the pressure plate to release the clutch when you push in the pedal so you can get it into gear or rev it up and gradually get it launched at the RPM you desire. Now, we've already topped the reservoir as full as it could get. And you never, you, want, you never want to go empty on your reservoir because when you're bleeding, the whole purpose is to get the fluid from the master to the slave perfectly actuating this hydraulic rod. Now, if you don't, well, what's the purpose if you get air in it? So you got to make sure this thing never runs dry. We're totally full, so I believe the way we're at right now, we'll probably get it right the first or second time because I did a pre-bleed on it. A pre-bleed is you just loosen the... Uh, the nut of the clutch slave cylinder and just let it free bleed out from gravity. If it free bleeds out like that, like this, how smooth it's bleeding out, it's pretty much already done. But I'm going to do a verification with a, one actuation of the clutch in just a moment. I'm going to tighten it just enough. Okay, let uh, my assistant push in the pedal. Pump it a few times. How does the clutch feel? Loose. Okay. You in? Mm-hmm. Again? Let off? Floor. You're on the floor? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Actuate it four or five times. Okay, we've completely bled the clutch master cylinder and the slave cylinder. And uh, you can tell when you've bled something and you no longer have air in it, but you still don't have the throw you need from the hydraulics in the clutch slave cylinder, you have to adjust it from the clutch master cylinder right where the pedal is. There's a jam nut you break loose. So you break loose this jam nut. Right? Break loose the jam nut. And you're going to, now you can either pull the pin out from the pedal and turn this out, which extends your pedal and gives you more throw. So you can extend it like this, or if you have a little six millimeter wrench, you can extend it by turning it this way, and that extends it without pulling the pin if you can get the room to do it. I know Nissan has a little special tool that fits in here, even though they got all this under dash stuff in the way, but on the uh, newer ZX's they have a lot more access. So you can just take either some vice grips or a little six millimeter and turn this rod 
until your pedal throw is as long as you need. The longer the throw of the pedal, the more actuation you have in the clutch master and the more actuation you have on the slave cylinder to give you that enough you know, throw to put it into gear with the engine running. So that's how you do it. And then once you're done adjusting, you can only go so far, then you tighten the jam nut. Of course, it's under the car we're talking about, under the dashboard. I'm not going to demonstrate that because you won't be able to see it, no room. So I'm demonstrating on the old clutch master cylinder. Any questions? Okay. Thanks for watching Budget Boosting. If you like our video, like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, subscribe to our channels. And remember our Budget Boosting stickers that are coming. 20 bucks buy it now options on eBay, free shipping. And our BudgetBoosting.com website. That's where you'll see them first. So remember... Knowledge is power, it's horsepower. So I'm going to start here. This is the brand new Brake Master Cylinder for a 1974 Nissan Datsun 260Z. And there's the old one. You can see it's due for a change. It's pretty nasty. That's a nasty Brake Master Cylinder. Okay, I'm going to set this over here. First thing is I like to loosen these retaining bolts right here. So I'm going to loosen these retaining bolts just enough 